All right. We are doing a after qualifying reaction to the Hungarian Grand Prix. And we have our special guest, Scott Greenspan, all the way from Hungary. He's at the Hungarian ring. I'm so jealous right now. Scott, you are the man. How is it out there? Uh, it was as hot as Hades yesterday. It was about 95 degrees in the, in the paddock club. There's no air conditioning, so it was more like 105. Wait, uh, there's no air conditioning in the paddock club? Nope. Not at all, but they have nice fans. Um, okay. okay, they have to have something. Especially the Ferrari fans. The, the Tifosi fans were yeah. hotter than lava. Uh, uh, but uh, but it, it's... Uh, the the quality was pretty hot too, especially if you're a McLaren fan. Let me tell you, the crowd was very heavily pro McLaren. Really, when got provisional pole. The crowd went crazy. There are well, more orange shirts there, and it's not and it's not Max Verstappen orange. It's papaya. You're kidding me. I'm not. I'm well, not. we're lucky today here at America F1 to have Scott join us for this after qualifying reaction to the Hungarian Grand Prix. So stay tuned. Here's the intro. Hit the intro music. They said it couldn't be done. They said it wouldn't last. White man, black man, America F1. <laughs> America F1 coming to you straight from San Francisco, California. Sherman Tillman, Michael Lawler. America F1. That's the best freaking intro of our well, care. That's when F1 sounded like F1. It, now it sounds like angry bumblebees. I mean, Mike did such a fabulous job with that. He did. Now, Scott, tell me, you're a guest at the Ferrari garage. Like, yeah. you are living every Ferrari fan's dream right now as we speak. Give us a reaction and tell us how that experience is. Sure. I am staying with the Ferrari Formula One Club, which is Ferrari's paddock club lounge. I want to be clear. Anybody can buy a ticket. You go on Ferrari's website. You Google Ferrari Formula One Club, and anybody can buy a ticket. So I'm not a sponsor. I don't even own a Ferrari. I'm actually a Porsche owner, or I've been for many years. But I do love Ferrari. Uh, great history, great F1 team. It's the fourth different team's uh, paddock club hospitality my wife and I have attended. We always wanted to, to do some races with Ferrari, so we decided to do this one, and we're doing one at Circuit of the Americas later. And it's a fabulous experience. Um, if you're into racing and the passion of racing, um, that's what Ferrari feeds on. And they treat you definitely differently than other teams in that aspect. So wow. the four teams that we've been to, this is the only F1 team that let us non-sponsors into their garage during race operations to sit Wait, in the back of the garage. You were in the back of the garage while... Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz were getting in the car and they're looking at all the their little computers and everything? Right. They actually gave us two 15-minute stints, one today during Quali, uh, believe it or not, during F, during um, uh, uh, during uh, Q2, so, um, and one uh, also yesterday during FP1. So, for example, during FP1, Charles and Carlos both were wheeled back into the garage in the middle. Carlos actually got out, took his helmet off, took the Hans device off, took his balaclava off, was talking with his cousin, with his race engineer, Ricky, as he likes to call him, um, one, you know, like two feet away from me. Uh, today during Quali, um, you know, we were, my wife and I were on F1 uh, TV because <clears throat> the cameras were in there. So you basically get to sit there in the back of the garage and you get to see the data that the race engineers are looking at. Um, you can't so Scott doesn't know it right now, but he's my long lost brother and he's going to adopt me. And then <laughs> I'm going to go to all, all the th great things that he gets to go to, to see, you know, they have, uh, I did the test, the DNA test, and we're long lost like brothers. <laughs> You're channeling your inner Oscar Piastri. 
This is like Man. Oscar has a race. Oscar has a home race every track because he gets somebody to adopt him. Yeah. So are you, Sherm. So, yeah, so that, that's what I'm going to do. You know, I'm getting rid of Mike. He <laughs> can't take me to these places. He doesn't know these type of things. I mean, you are living the Tafosi life. And we are so happy to have you talk about your experience here in the Hungaro ring, in the Ferrari garage. Now, here's the question that everybody, everybody wants to know. Did they keep the right driver? And did you hear anything about that in the garage? Should they have kept Carlos Sainz over Charles Leclerc? I will say within the garage, what you hear from the actual Ferrari team is a feeling of bittersweetness. They love Carlos and they would never, ever, ever have let him go unless but for the fact that a legendary seven-time world champion who knows how to win uh, and who can, who they believe can attract all sorts of people to the team that might never come, uh, but for him, mm -hmm. um, became available very unexpectedly. Um, and it much like when Michael Schumacher became available to Ferrari, they really see the coming of Lewis as basically what happened when Michael Schumacher came mm. that, that he will attract people to their team that would never come or never come. That, 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 that he'll bring a change in the culture a little bit. He'll shake things up that he's a closer, that he knows how to win. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they want that the leadership wants that they want what he can bring, but let's be clear. Nobody believes in that team that Carlos signs did not earn a renewal. They are not, happy that he's leaving uh they didn't want him to leave it was just that lewis came along and they felt they could not pass up the opportunity to have a what they view as a transformational figure come into the team now um, i got a question for you scott for all the lady fans out there now yeah. take a look at this picture or this video and then tell me i'll i'll ask a question after you take a look at this video and then and uh, was very close to me and overtook, uh, which was fine, but then. Now, is Charles Leclerc really that good looking? Yes. Yeah, I mean, he is actually better looking in person <laughs> than in video. Uh, I actually think, I actually think Carlos photographs better in video uh, than Charles. In person, Charles is actually, I think, better looking than even in, in video. He's a larger man, I think, in person than in video. Mm -hmm. he comes, he's actually bigger, better proportion. And he is, he's also, the thing about Charles, besides the fact that he's a nice looking person, he's sort of a beautiful human being. He is extraordinarily polite to everybody. He never has a bad day, even when he is having a bad day. In other words, he never takes it out on anyone. I mean, I've been to many races. We go to about five races a year in the paddock club. The way that he interacts with fans is different than any other F1 driver that we've ever seen. And we see all of them. Right. He is patient. He is generous. He is polite to a fault. And it, he, he really was raised properly. Um, he just... He never let the fact of his success go to his head. And that is not universally shared with all the drivers of his stature. So as a person, he's somebody who you really want to see succeed. Um, and, you know, professionally, uh, I, I sort of feel like when, when Ferrari, when the Ferrari car is good, he, mm -hmm. he performs better than Carlos. When the Ferrari car is not good or mediocre, Carlos performs better. Now, switching <laughs> gears. Yes. What was the reaction in the Mercedes garage when George Russell didn't have enough fuel in the car and was out of qualifying? I Early. think there was, well, George was obviously extraordinarily upset. Uh, you know, I wasn't in the Mercedes garage, but I did watch the TV. Um, they're on, they're right next door to Ferrari and, uh, there was not a lot of happiness there. I mean, I, I think they miscalculated. They thought that, you know, that he didn't need as much fuel as he needed. Mm -hmm. And his first run was on him. It was not as fast as it should have been. Um, it was the banker. But, you know, he thought 
that he would be getting another faster run and he never really got it because he needed more fuel. So it was a screw up. It was. Yeah. I read something or not even, I didn't read it. Like George said it. I saw it on some, uh, some website that he was supposed to do a fast lap, a slow lap, and then a fast lap, which would have enough fuel, but he did a fast, fast, and fast. That way there was no fuel left for him to, to get another lap in. And he said it was a hundred percent his fault. And then of course, total said afterwards that it was the team's fault, which he's supposed to do. He's supposed to cover for his driver. It just seems like a Mercedes was on such a run right now. And you know, they, they won in Austria. They won in the Silverstone. Yeah. Which I was there. I was there. I saw it. You were there. I was there. And why you would do a fast, 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 because you need a lap to cool the tires down, recharge the battery. It doesn't make any sense from a racing standpoint to do a fast, 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 because that doesn't really allow the tires to come back into the temperature window. They get too hot and your battery gets drained. So I'm not sure why they would have done that. Now, since you're in the Ferrari garage, did Lewis stop by? Did did, did, did you see Lewis stop in? Did he say, hey, hey, how you guys doing? I'll be here next year. Like, because the (laughs) garages are right next to each other. He, they are, but Lewis does. Lewis, Lewis is loyal to Mercedes until the day that he walks out the door. He is not hanging out in. I'm telling you now. I've I've seen a few races. He's not hanging out in Ferrari team hospitality. He's not chilling with Fred. He's not chilling with, <clears throat> with with uh, Charles. Other than during the drivers' parade, where you do see right. he he is spending quite a lot of time with Charles during drivers' parades. I, I do really? see that. Yeah. If you look at the videos, you'll see. Uh-huh that he and Charles are doing quite a lot of talking during driver's parades. Cause you know, during these race weekends, the drivers almost never, unlike F2 where they have a shared hospitality and they all eat together. F1 is not like that. The only real, you know, social interactions drivers have with one another, you know, during the race weekends is things like the driver's meeting and right before the driver's parade, that's it. And so I do see that during those times, they do talk a lot together. Uh, sort of bonding towards next year but that's it so lewis is a hundred percent dedicated towards mercedes until the day that he walks out the door now another question is what perez crashing once again i mean this poor guy i feel so bad for checo because the pressure just must be insurmountable right now yeah and it's really taking a toll with the gossip yeah, I mean, what was the reaction with the fans, and what did you see being at the race right there? What did what did you see yeah. about his word? Oh. I mean, pretty much everybody in the paddock thinks it's over. Mm-hmm. It's really a question that after Spa during the summer break, he will be replaced. Um, it's just, I mean, look, the constructors' championship is is strongly in play. McLaren is rising. Uh, Max is carrying Red Bull on his own. Uh, he can't fight the two of them. I mean, McLaren obviously doesn't yet have the strategic chops of Red Bull. Right. They have squandered victories. A lot. But, but nonetheless, they are still earning more points than Max by himself because Max is fighting a one front war and he's not driving an RB19. He's driving an RB20. And there has been, I think, a very substantial performance drop off Ever since Newey announced his departure, although you know rabbit Red Bull supporters will deny it, but it's as clear as uh, it's as clear as day. The second that Newey announced his departure and started losing influence, um, that car is going to, is backsliding, and you saw it's it. True. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Ever since Newey said he's leaving, they've mm-hmm. been kind of on the back back burner. I mean, he, he I can't believe he was that influential on the daily aspect of bringing that car to a, a, a good point on race day and qualifying. I didn't know he was that influential, but it I seems like very hands on. And yeah. I, I know that Newey wants <clears throat> one of the big <clears throat> negotiations points that Newey, I, I can tell you now, whatever team Newey goes to, whether it's Ferrari or Aston Martin, Newey wants a lot of autonomy in what that car is going to do. Mm. And well, he deserves it. Very determinative of what team he ends up in because not every team may be willing culturally to give him that. Right. 
I think right. that might be a, a stumbling block in him going to Marinello. Although if I were Marinello, I would give him that autonomy because everything that Nui touches turns to gold. I mean, every team that he's gone to wins. Um, now, what is your reaction to now? One, you saw Perez do that crash. And immediately I, I'm thinking, okay, Yuki, have a good race. Have a, Yuki, have a good qualify. Come on, Yuki. Come on, Yuki. And then Yuki, really, he hit that curb and the car launched up in the air. It was very strange. I haven't seen that happen before. I mean, I've seen it happen before, but not, not, in, this, not in this instance. It should have just slid. <clears throat> the back should have just slid out and he could have maybe touched, touched the barrier. But he actually got launched up in the air, which was kind of strange. But does that hurt his chances? And you never really hear about, you know, Tr Christian Horner saying that they're going to put Yuki in a car. I don't it. understand it. I don't understand it. Christian Let me Horner, understand. <clears throat> I don't think Christian Horner believes that Yuki has the gravitas and the maturity to take the seat next to Max. I just don't. I, it's sad because he's, he's done very well. I mean, you know, every driver crashes sometimes. He's not crash happy or crash prone. It's not like he crashes all the time. I mean, as far as that crash went, uh, he seemed to have misjudged the corner. He he went in a little too hot. He understeered, you know, um, car couldn't quite turn as tightly as he needed it to. He put wheels on the grass and you just lose all your traction on the grass. That's it. He put wheels on the grass. That corner turn five used to have a concrete runoff. Hmm. They changed it to grass. And as a driver, when you go into grass, you lose all grip on a turn. When you're turning like that at the apex and you hit grass, you're not your your grip is gone. And that's why he slammed into the wall. Because so he lost all of his give grip. Give me your prediction on who you think is gonna probably replace Checo. Daniel Ricardo. I think they're gonna give him a retirement drive huh. for for the rest of this season. And if he performs great and if he doesn't it's his retirement drive and then they put liam lawson in and they, they, they would go to liam over yuki even next year i mean they think that little well, yuki he beat liam lawson he 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 beat daniel he beat liam lawson no 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 no. liam lawson beat yuki i believe <clears throat> four races to five four races to one when they were together go back and look at the record from last year it was four races to one it, it, I'm not talking about qualifying. I'm talking about actually in the race. Yeah, I yeah it was it was four to one last year. Yeah, man, I'm gonna have to look that the up. The only race he, the only race where Yuki beat him, was Cotter. Okay. Yeah. Look, right. I, I I don't think they don't respect Yuki. I don't know how else to say it. Christian Horner does not think Yuki has the maturity or the emotional control for that seat. It's never going to happen. That's my feeling. Liam does. Liam is much <clears throat> more, this is the way, the, I think the way they think, much more confident, much more settled. When you see him in the paddock, because we see him a lot in the paddock, he's very self-assured, but not cocky. He's very chill. He has tremendous emotional control, um, very mature. I can't tell you if they think he's fast enough. I don't, I, I don't, I haven't seen his data. They've seen his data. I don't know what his data looks like. Yeah. Um, you know, he did very solid in F2. He was one of the best drivers. He wasn't the best, but he was among the best. Um, but his race record was solid. He got two points in a car that was horrible, but he consistently finished ahead of Yuki. And I don't think Yuki's ever getting that drive. I just don't. So Maybe he would probably have to go to Aston Martin when uh, Honda takes over probably there. And <laughs> if, if Alonzo uh, pulls the plug, then I would think. If when Alonzo pulls the plug, which at some point Fernando will retire, mm -hmm. you know, maybe two more years, maybe one. It depends on, I think it largely depends on what Fernando feels the team's trajectory is. If the team continues to sort of languish and like P7, P8, P9, and there's no prospect of really getting back on the podium, he'll be there a couple of more seasons and that's it. Now, Scott, being there in person, how mm -hmm. much quicker did the McLarens look to everybody else? I mean, because when Not you're quicker. there, you can really tell the speed. Like when I was in Silverstone, you can really tell the speed difference between the top cars 
and then the cars are, you know, maybe mid pack. And then obviously the cars near the bottom of the grid. Now, how okay. much faster was the McLarens than the Red Bulls and the Ferraris and the Mercedes today? Well, I mean, when you look at the, the you know, the quality laps, you've got the McLarens within two hundreds of each other. And you've got, and really Max was only a couple of hundreds off of the McLaren. So you've got the top three very close together. And then there's about, you know, four additional hundreds or whatever. No, excuse me. Then there's four tenths down to sign. So there's a huge gap between the top three. The top three quality laps were all 115 twos. Mm -hmm. And then you go to 115 six for signs. So there's a big gulf between the top three and Carlos. And who was really the best of the rest. So, but there was a difference watching, watching that qualifying up close and seeing the reactions of how the garage mechanics are. And you you get to see all the little nuances that you don't get to see on the TV Mm -hmm. because they're not actually showing the garage every second. So what is your prediction for the top three tomorrow? Since it's going to be hot, I heard Mm -hmm. it's not going to be like mixed condition like it was today. Hmm. That's a tough one. Um, Isn't that tough? Really? I, it is because you know that Red Bull is going to execute a perfect race. Always. Max is not going to make a mistake. And the, you know, the, the garage is not, they're, they're not going to mess up the strategy. And Lando sometimes bottles it. Yeah, he, he he's intemperate. He he freezes. He screws up, especially the first lap. And he so maybe Oscar can have a chance. chance. What do you think? Well, the real challenge for Oscar is keeping his tires alive. That's really the open question with Oscar. Oscar's got all the gravitas and the presence of mind to be a real to to be a very dangerous driver for Lando because he's got this presence of mind that I don't think Lando has. Mm-hmm. He's much more serious. He's a killer. He's an assassin. You know, o- Oscar. He's very like this. I'm very impressed with Oscar. I, yeah. I really, I okay. really am impressed with that guy. No one has ever looked at Oscar mentally as a rookie because he's yeah. so mature. And it's really been just, you know, his his getting his racecraft up to that level. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Oscar's got a good chance to win. I, I, I will tell you now, Max seems to be struggling with the car. If you saw his Q, his last Q3 lap, he was fighting that car the whole way, and he almost lost it at okay. the last turn. He was sawing the wheel. You know, he was doing this with the wheel, and then he pounded the steering wheel because he was so angry when he came over the line. You go back and look at the video. He was slamming the steering wheel, which he doesn't normally do because he lost his pole position because he just he struggled to keep – he had to make so many corrections to keep the car from going off track Mm -hmm. that those corrections cost you lap time. And so the the car just isn't under him. Um, Doesn't mean he won't win. He doesn't mean Max won't find a way to win, but he's fighting the car. The the, the car is not comfortable. So So, Scott, stop being a lawyer. Give me who's gonna win tomorrow. Tell me. Oscar first win. Thank you. I hope Oscar wins tomorrow. I really do. I want to see him. I just like that guy, man. There's just something about him. What what I like about Oscar, no excuses. He makes a mistake, owns it. He doesn't blame anybody else. When he can't keep his tires alive, owns it. I need to get better at tire management. That's one of my weak points. I'm like, I like that. Just I think there's a huge pace difference between the top three and everyone Mm -hmm. else. It's a there's a there is a tremendous I mean, there's four tenths separating the top three. Between everyone else. That's a big difference. But don't you think that usually Ferrari and the Mercedes will have better race pace? They usually, typically this year, they've had better race pace than qualifying pace? Or is it going to be too hot? Well, the thing, it's going to be hot. Mm -hmm. Um, Tires are going to dig. Mercedes cars just loathe hot weather. Yeah, they do. I don't get it. And so this is not going to be a good race for Mercedes. I would mm-hmm. pull them out. Um, Ferraris do better when it's hot, usually. Yeah. Um, but there's a pretty big gulf 
between Ferrari performance and Max and McLaren. That's a big delta. They're not within a tenth or two. They're four four tenths is a huge delta. Right. This is a small track. Yeah. This is a short it's hard track. to pass there. And it's a hard track to pass. I mean, look, they say it's Monaco without walls. Yeah. I got a track tour. You know, I've driven on track myself. You can pass. It's not Imola. It's wider than Imola. It's easier to pass than Imola. Um, you can pass. It's not as bad as Monaco. So tell tell us before, because I know your time is valuable and you got to wake up early tomorrow because I hear you're going to be rubbing elbows with Ali Berman. Which, not uh, rubbing elbows, but they'll be in the well. Well, Charles is definitely coming mm -hmm. tomorrow at, at 9.35. Ali was supposed to come today but he qualified really bad for, for F2. He was only like 14th. Hmm. And I think because of the, his poor qualifying result and just because of the demands between FP1 and, and you know, in, in F1 and F2, they decided to give him a break on his commitments. And so okay. Are you going to get, are you going to see Kimi Antonelli? How did he I mean, qualify? He's a Mercedes driver. So How did he qualify today? Uh, Kimmy qualified about P7 or so. He's not really tearing up F2 for a guy well, that they have all this hype about. Well, Kimmy, it was very sad. The, Prema did something really nuts. They put him on soft tires for a basically race where you're supposed to not stop. It was 28 laps. So you know what happened, right? Yeah, the tires. He, he went into the lead. He, he gained seven positions. And he was in the lead. He was three seconds ahead. And what do you think happened to his tires? Yeah, the tires <laughs> they went away. And then he started dropping like a like a kite. Stone. He dropped yeah. like a stone. I mean, there's just nothing he could do. So I don't know why Prema did that. That was a stupid strategy. I mean, I, I mean, if the race were ten laps, but twenty eight laps on soft. Yeah, he, <laughs> not, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Yeah, no, not going to happen. So leave leave everybody with something that we don't see on TV that you yeah. saw in person that we should look out for either for tomorrow's race or during the rest of the season. You mean in terms of F1, something that people should look out for? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think what you're seeing right now mm -hmm. is Carlos outperforming Charles, you know, within Ferrari. You're seeing Carlos fighting really hard for a top tier position. And he is he he is outperforming Charles again consistently. Um, that is that surge. And now Carlos has 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 taken the bull by the horns and said, No, I'm the better driver. I should never have lost my seat. I want to be in a top team. And you see, he's holding out for that Mercedes seat. He is holding out for that Hamilton seat. I'm telling you right now, mm -hmm. he's gonna get a two-year contract to replace Lewis. I, I've been, Scott, 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 are we mind melding right now? I've been saying that all year. Why are they looking for well, one year? Why are they doing all this? You got Carlos Sainz, who's obviously the best guy who doesn't have a contract out there. Put that man in the seat and then let's see him and George battle it out. And I think he, he'll, he'll, he'll spank George, in my opinion. He I think he will in too, the beginning because he has to get used to the car. I think but before the season's over, I think he would. I think it's going to be very close. But I, I think, look, if Toto wanted to put Kimmy in that seat, he probably already would have. Right. I think he's. I think he's had second thoughts because Kimmy is doing okay. He's not doing terribly, but he's not. He's not performing. Let's say how Oscar Piastri performed, or how George Russell performed, right. or how Charles Leclerc performed. Right. Um, he should he probably do a couple years in Williams. I think if JV can be persuaded to take him and mm. not one of his own drivers, wow. and that's going to require Mercedes to offer JV a real sweetener, right? Like uh, a real discount on that PU right. uh, so that Williams can devote its, its funds elsewhere, like maybe rebuilding their 20 year old antiquated infrastructure. Yeah. That's, that's the key over there. And, you know, yeah. they tried to get some concessions with the rest of the constructors uh, to you know, so wouldn't call, go into the cost cap, and, and they all said no. <laughs> I mean, they got a little bit, but not what they wanted. I mean, yeah. JV got a little bit. The, the poor teams got a little bit more money, right? 
not what JV. Would yeah, be. not 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 even close. And the, um, the, the problem with the cost cap is if you're a back marker team and you've had 20 years of underinvestment, mm -hmm. it actually stops you from coming up because you need Williams was so underinvested that that team needs a billion dollars of investment, two billion dollars of investment to be at the point that the top teams are at. And they'll never be able to get there because they can't do it. They're not allowed to via the cost cap to catch up. And I got to tell you, this is why Carlos is risking no seat at all, because he doesn't want to be a back market. He doesn't want to be at Haas. He doesn't want to be at Williams. He doesn't want to be at Audi. He wants to be at Mercedes or Red Bull. And I think he'd almost rather not have a drive than be than be in the back. And so that, that's risky. A smooth operator. Let's see him operate. I apologize, Carlos. The FIA has informed us that singing smooth operator is not allowed due to copyright laws. No, oh, this is not good. It's unacceptable. Those are rules. We'll have to find another song for you to sing. It's unacceptable. Tell them. It is unacceptable. How are your tires feeling, Carlos? I don't know. It was... So we have received a five-second penalty for that. <laughs> Please, you tell them they have to talk to me. You tell them they have to talk to me. Oh. Well, we want to thank Scott for joining us today and giving us some insight in the paddock and in the garage of what he's seeing here at the Hungaro ring. I also like to give Scott the opportunity to plug. He has a great um, Instagram that if you go to the races or if you don't go, it gives a real good insight to being at the race. And I'm going to give Scott a chance to plug that. Go ahead, Scott. Oh, um, my own Instagram is great. It's STG1871. Uh, that's my own Instagram. And uh, somebody near and dear to me has an Instagram that's not mine, but it's called experiences.xo. Um, but it's it's not mine, though. It's one that's uh, somebody who's near and dear to me who takes much better pictures and videos than I do. Mm -hmm. um, but that one has all sorts of uh, scenes from the paddock club and inside the paddock and uh, lots of things that you generally won't see otherwise um, yeah what, I, what, I ran into it and there's a lot of the girlfriends of the drivers out on it and like i don't know hardly any i don't know their names and everything and i was like oh this is cool i get to see who they are and actually know a little bit about them so it is a, a good resource for a formula one fan to get an overall picture of all the drivers and who they hang out with. So it's pretty cool. But I, I want to thank Scott for taking the time all the way from Hungary to come on our channel and talk Formula One and yeah. give a little insight into what's happening on the ground. We will, I'll be in spa next and we'll see how that goes. Oh man, you're gonna be in, wait, you're going to spa? We're going to spa. We've got the legends package. So we'll be in the paddock on Sunday on race day. I mean, they were going I'm just living the life that I want to live. I mean, I go to races. I don't. I, I could probably only go to one paddock a year because the rest of the time I have to like sit in the grandstands. I mean, he's going to every paddock. He, he's sitting with, you know, in the Ferrari garage. He's living the life that all us Formula One fans want to live, and we want to thank him for taking the time out of his busy day to join us here at America F1. Tune in tomorrow. We're gonna do a reaction to the race we usually don't do this but mike is not working tomorrow and um, i have tomorrow off so after the typical we we go to church and then we go to our family uh luncheon so after our family brunch we're going to do a show uh for a reaction and hopefully scott is either in traffic or out of traffic so he can come in and join us and do a special show for tomorrow which ladies and gentlemen we normally don't do this we normally don't work on Sundays because Sundays is God's day. And that's the day we're supposed to be watching, enjoying things with our family. But we're going to take the time since Scott's out there right now. We're going to take the time if Scott has the time to come back tomorrow and do another show. And we want to thank everybody for tuning in to America F1. The channel has been growing by leaps and bounds. Our last couple of videos are approaching 10,000 views on uh, YouTube, which is 
you know, for, for the, some of these other channels and they're corporate and they got hundreds of thousands of people because they're the corporate entity. We're just a small underground channel and we're growing and we want to thank everybody for tuning in and tell your friends, tell your loved ones. And thank you, Scott, for joining us. Thanks it's, for having been, me on. it's been uh, great yeah. having uh, your insight. And I'm going to play this little thing at the end because I've been told to play it. So <laughs> everybody... Please like, subscribe, and hit the view. And hit, I'm gonna I'm gonna play it so you, you can you can follow along. <laughs> so like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when a new episode hits YouTube. We're also on Spotify. We're also on Apple Music and anywhere you listen to your podcast. Thank you for tuning in to another exciting episode of America F1. Keep on racing, everybody.